Okay, welcome back to Doki Doki, part four, I think. So it's the weekend, and uh, just want to let you know, I think this is the part of the game where it gets really, really dark. Remember when I said that in the beginning? It gets dark eventually. Flashback. And if you don't know what this game is, then you're probably thinking, oh, this is just a nice visual novel. Well, it's not. It gets very, very dark. Eventually. Eventually it will get very very dark. End of flashback. I think this is the part of the game where it gets dark. So uh, trigger warning. If you are sensitive to the topic of depression and uh, suicide. Don't recommend this part of the video. I think I think this is where you can stop watching the let's play. And if you're not sensitive to that topic. Then uh, welcome. And stay tuned because it gets dark. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. Putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club earlier that other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. And the music is gone. Come to think of it, it's actually weird how music can change your mood. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I presume she's up in her room. Wait, does Sayori love you alone? I head up to the bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Is that you? Why didn't you tell me you were secretly a toy cow? <laughs> Hi, Thorny. I sit down in her room. Sayori force, forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is, a messy as, is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and the, and the walls decorated that she's had for years now. <laughs> if we've came over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I, I'd end up cleaning for it for you. How come you suddenly, want, suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left the time we decided the lo that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? That's true. But what about you? Aren't you supposed to be uh, going to help Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Say Yuri stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide from me. Hide it from me. I know you too well, so Sari smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Tony. Huh? Why couldn't it just be like it's always been? That's all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come here over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori? 
I grabbed Sayuri by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sayuri gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Thorny. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayuri? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Thorny? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had a really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? It's because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything where I fully know what, how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy into caring to, to waste by having to spend time with me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayuri has kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Is she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why, Sayuri? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like you've betrayed, I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I can do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every little day better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Thorny. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted to so badly for you to make friends with everyone. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why, that's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayuri. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Thorny. There's nothing, nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everyone could is that every if everything could be like it was, always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayuri's face. I made you join the literary checkup because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and made and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish, that's all I am, and that's why I'm going to accept these punishments, because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once grabbed Sayuri's shoulders, this time I pull her into a tight embrace. Ah, Thorny, Sayuri, I don't care if you feel selfish, I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club, seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Thorny. Sayuri isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayuri's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Thorny. I... Sayuri barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then let me. You have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to happen, needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Right? 
don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayuri finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't ad- understand any of my feelings, Thorny. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary too. Sayuri lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I I think that would be nice then. Yeah. She already wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this has to be one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you do that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? That would be fun. To my surprise, Sayuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if it would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah, uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my orders. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. Well, that was a weird experience. I say goodbye to Sayuri and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayuri is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should focus on what's ahead of me. I approach the house. I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody would answer the doorbell. You, oh, you always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you that and hurried more on my way home. Uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiosity, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you. Ah, no. Would have been really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Ah. That would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's dress, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's dress. She puts her hands firmly on her, in her lap as if she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Ah, yes. Uh, I have a few things planned that you can help with decorations and the atmosphere enhancements atmospheric enhancements you know mood lighting aromatherapy candles oh wow i didn't know you planned on taking it that far of course i want to help take our guests to a far away place although many will stop by just for curio- out of curiosity and for cupcakes i guess i'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more that's great it's easy to forget that you are a really intense person. Ah, uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. That's something that I actually like about you. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I brought something for relaxation. I was going to use it during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's see. Yuri damages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows with black paper and use the candles to light the room. 
I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would actually be pretty neat. What's with the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? A diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Is that so? It's one of my favorite contributions to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can feel it bring men through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes it, a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a wall, through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells like a sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I choose jasmine because it, for the event because it provides more than just relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion on your opinion with anything. But he smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into a bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper that I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over there. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah, what will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we fasten the paper in onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I would also catch the eye of those passing off by the room. It may be. It may attract someone some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you was you'd be good, so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you'd put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels of sharing something that she enjoys. He has a marker, Thorny. You can add any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I'd carefully throw a different character on each paper doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. I, to be honest, I think she shouldn't have given us that job because both me and the guy I'm playing as have bad handwriting so it's gonna look ugly. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to be her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out the pocket knife. Yuri, don't, don't do what I think you do. You, you're not trying to mug me, are you? I, I know you have a pocket knife. You're probably, you're probably hiding it behind your hand, but don't, don't do this. Don't do this. You can't, you can't kill me like this. Not in my own house. What the fuck is wrong with you? Ah! What am I talking about? Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. <laughs> well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Really, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. If I promise you won't be weirded out, yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so... pretty. I, c I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe. Um, what am I saying? If a girl came up to you and said she likes knives, what would you do? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It is, well, interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, I think it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, and I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? You really access our expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hand. 
It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curiosity of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ah! Tony! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. I can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Rudy takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off. Huh. Without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and then licks the wound. I knew she was a freak, but not that type of freak. It's always the quiet ones that are the freaks. I would know I'm a quiet person. I feel a tongue curl around my finger. I startle, insta instinctively pulling pull my hand back. Uh oh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I. Yuri lowers her head. Her face is burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sure it was a little weird, but it took me by a surprise. I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. <laughs> she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't come out, cover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyways. I take Yuri's hand. Lick her finger index in return. Tony, did you really just do that? Now we're even. He then looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If it's not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Tony. Hey, you were the one who licked my finger first. Yuri giggles shyly. <laughs> Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look at that, he stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri cut through the rubber like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and it will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why you asked me to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items you asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We will need about six cups of water and Put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and uh, just a little water. But the water is okay. If you fill the cups up too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use a small, I use small plastic bathroom cups than rather full-size glasses. I put them on a plate and catch the paint, and catch any paint that drips. Then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in you or anything? Ah, uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tables, dropping them into the cups. Tablets, I mean. So... I thought we would do something simple that it would look very nice. I'd like to paint some gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium, at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to us surprise you. Yuri smiles. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel opposite on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. I use this Yuri with brush then add a few dots of a different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects back we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, 
I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mind that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Can you stop spending for a moment thinking to thinking to herself? For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when I could spend time with one other person, even if it's something simple like reading. It doesn't even matter. We don't have, even if we don't have, talk that much. Just having fun with a friend next to me makes me feel a, a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games. Where simply sharing the experience with someone make, can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump hers. Yeah! Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quietly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked for you to you to get that for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something wrong with my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get the towel right away. I rush her to fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room, kneel back down in front of her. Here, I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry, I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri started suddenly holds my wrist. Wait, huh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah, keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in the dazed. Enveloped by her own thoughts, she breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Ray gently wraps her. Yuri's gentle, gentle fingers wraps around my wrist, sends a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. S sorry. I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it begins. Yuri picks up a brush again, but her movements are seem clumsy here. Like she's unable to focus. I remain silent. Forced to ignore the event that just inspired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the nice sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty and natural looking. Came out better than I expected. I'm really I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh not yet. This needs to dry first. That's true, but it won't take a while. Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here, then I'll then you have to bring it the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before the event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say like that you're glad it's over. I was wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit. Ah, no, it's not that. I was glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little bit concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Huh? So you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping that we could have extra time after finishing the work. Well, Yuri thinks to herself. I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. That's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. It's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all our things, Yuri seems to be... To look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean that this last time can't happen. That this is the last time it can happen. Or maybe it could. It probably is. Yuri packs up. I walk her out of out the front door. Thank you so much for having me today. No problem. I was glad. I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then...
Get a fidget. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of said without that without thinking. About today, let's find that we don't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out that much. I stumble over my words. You need some please smiles be bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say so. You're very thoughtful, Thorny. Really takes a step closer to me and briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get the chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. S Sayuri? Huh? Ah, uh, hi, Thorny. Sayuri? Just now, we wanna... <laughs> it's okay, Thorny. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Sayuri beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Carefully embarrassed, Yuri had his off. Sayuri waves goodbye after... Sayuri? I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well... I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. So... I had to come here you know, and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know. How much you're having fun with the Yuri. And how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayuri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Thorny? How am I supposed to be happy for you? Why does it feel like my heart is being split in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayuri, don't say that. That's true, Thorny. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have wasted your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayuri... What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you is, is isn't caring about you like this isn't a burden. Your mind is just making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I would trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But Sayuri looks, looks away. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure. I'm scared, Tony. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayuri? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayuri? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started liking you too much. I did this to myself. Thorny. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and... That's enough, Sayuri. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand on Sayuri's arms and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember what I said? Do you remember how I said I'll always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayuri nods. Even if you don't understand all your own feelings, I know what you need most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayuri, you'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with something really some really difficult feelings right now, but... Please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll get, I'll, I'll help get things back to what the way they were. I, I see. Sayuri forces a smile through an incredibly plain expression. <laughs> Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayuri, it's okay. It's just my punishment. Remember, for being so selfish. So please. Please don't worry about my st these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole thing, the whole time that there was no happiness down the path. That's why I came here. So I could just get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right. I just want things to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Tony. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all, so... Sayuri's smile finally breaks. 
all of a sudden she turns around and drops to her knees. <coughs> Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sally looks over her shoulder. She flashes me with one weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayuri! I'm left helpless standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling hor so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. Most I can do is support Sayuri through the feeling and help her on the path that's right. I'm starting to think that saying Sayuri will always be my dearest friend is not the choice I should have made. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayuri's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should do something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayuri will always be my dearest friend. And all I can do is put a smile on her face every day. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be with walking to school with Sayuri. But Sayuri isn't answering her phone. And the music stopped. It's gonna get dark. Just want to build that out. It's gonna get dark. Just want to let you know it's gonna get dark. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but I decided that's a little too much. You should have. You should have waited. You should have went to her house, fam. You should have went to her house. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. Banner Yuri and I painted this tie and I gently rolled it up to take it with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayuri and Yuri, Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Thorny, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be one, the ones she prepared that have all the poems we are performing. In the end, I found a random poem online so that, that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayuri with you. She overslept, yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You think that on a days this important, she try a little harder. I say that but I suddenly remember what Sayuri told me yesterday. I suddenly feel awkward knowing that it's nearly, not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because that's how I'm used to thinking, but maybe I should have gone with to wake up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Thorny. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange. Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Is Sayuri really tell her about that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. But I'm the only one who knows what's best for her, right? So you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poems is nearly, is nearly printed on its own page, giving an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki's and Yuri's poem from the ones they performed during, during the, our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayuri's poem. It's different than the one from the one she practiced. This one I haven't read before. Get out of my head, 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 get out of get out of my head before I do some before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything you she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But the poem is never actually finished. It never stops moving. Another disclaimer, it's gonna get very dark at this point. We've reached the dark point. You know, at the beginning we were at the light point, and we were slowly coming to the dark point. We're close to the dark point. So disclaimer. Ah, <laughs> uh, what is this? 
reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Thorny? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else Sayuri has written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayuri, so... Ah. Well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls out after me. I quickly... I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayuri. We both should have. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of waking her to school makes me really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they've always been. That's all she needs. That's what I want to, and what I want to give her. I reach Sayuri's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayuri? She's really a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I've ended up, up doing this after all. I walk into a, up into a house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayuri's room, I knock on the door. Sayuri? Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really don't want, didn't want to have to enter a room like this. I think it's kind of a breach of privacy, but she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Guys, this is your final disclaimer. It's gonna get dark. Say you, say yo. I told you. I told you it gets dark. I told you it gets dark. I've seen this before, but it's actually kind of scary playing it now. You know, I'm used to reacting to people playing it, but now I've no. Yeah, I'm scared. An exception has occurred. What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayuri would it do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayuri I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to be what I pushed her over the edge. Her agonizing scream still echoes in my ears. Okay, I just want to disclaim something. Even if you accepted her confession, this still would have happened. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is all my fault. My swoop. Warming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, if I walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of, her, out of our relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can just reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. And that's the end of the game. I'm sorry it has a shitty ending, but uh, that's how the game was programmed and I can do nothing about that. And I lied, the game isn't over.